Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast, Lamy's Last Word. With me, Zach Lamy, and my roommate, who is again not here, but he'll start coming. So it's like hard to get three people in one schedule, especially like when we have school, sports, and all that. But throughout this podcast, we unveil insights one topic at a time. Uh, We explore life beyond sports. Beyond scores and stats, we dive into broader aspects of life's lessons and inspirations. In this episode, we're transitioning from the court to the field. We're exploring into the sport baseball. A freshman right-handed pitcher, Adam Swatalski, from Burlington, Wisconsin. In high school, he went to state his junior year and was second team on all-conference due to injury. He is now at Lipscomb and had his first career adding, outing last Saturday and actually just played last night um, for how many outs? One out? Yeah, right? the, like, yeah, the yeah, ninth inning. One out. Ninth, ninth inning. Um, so with all that being said, please welcome Adam Swatowski. How are we doing today? Doing good, man. That's great to hear. So you know how it goes now. We start out with a would you rather question. And my would you rather question to you is, would you rather have the – R- rather be able to rewind time by one hour once a day or be able to pause time for 10 seconds once a day? Oh. I think I'd rather pause time. Like, coming really? from, like, athletics, athletic perspective, yeah. like, it's like a free timeout almost. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, But, like... Like, especially, like, say I'm in the mound, like, yesterday on the ninth inning, like, like we needed to stop You got your guy. jitters, like, you got yeah. your jitters going, so you like, so I just need to... If I could just take a 10-second timeout, it's like... Yeah, just relax a little bit. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know. I might go the one hour because, like. The rewind one hour? Yeah. Like, say, like, oh, you just had a game played horrible. <laughs> or, like, you started out a game playing horrible because the game normally goes past, like, an hour. Yeah. Then you can just go whoosh, rewind. And you know what I mean? I know, but I feel like if you're having a bad day, you're having a bad day. Nothing's really going to change. True. 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 Well, I mean, something good, you know what I mean? Something. But, um, so diving into this podcast, um, I knew you grew up in Burlington. That's what, like, kind of. Can you kind of tell, like, it's a smaller, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm i from a small town, Wisconsin. Um, yeah. The nearest big town is Burlington. Mm-hmm. I technically live in Wheatland, Wisconsin, which is, like, 500 people max. Like Wow. Like, it's technically, like, you know those, like, green signs that say, like, the name of your town and then, like, population. the population underneath? Yeah. Mine says unincorporated because so there's like no, no one, one lives there. So, like, around there, like, what is there to do? Cornfields. That's, like, all we so got. Like, like, there's just fields, like, the middle school, like, obviously Wisconsin, so there's, like, literally nothing. Like, it's, like, wow. there's a little tiny town with a couple bars and restaurants, and there's one barber shop and a, the dump. So, like, it's everyone like, knows everyone, basically. Oh, yeah, 100%. Is, it every, is everything, like, close together, or is, like, it's kind of more spread out because it, it's, of the... It's spread out, so it's, like... The high school that I went to, there are, I think, six different middle schools that feed into it. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and so it's like there's just one massive highway that goes for like, I don't know, you could travel like 30 minutes across this highway, and all those kids go to the same high school. And how big was the high school you went to? I don't know the exact number. Like, like my graduating, graduating class. Graduating, yeah. Yeah, like so I went to a public high school. And yeah. I, we, we were in Division two. We actually just transferred to Division one, But, yeah, we only Is had, that the Division one's the highest? So, yeah, but Wisconsin does – D1, D2, D3. Yeah. D4. Yeah. So, but I, we were D2, and our graduating class was only, like, 135 people. Wow. Out of a public high school. Like, wow, that, it's yeah, a, it's a everyone knows everyone that's, type situation. Wow, that's tiny. Yeah. So, like, it's just one highway with just a bunch of subdivisions split off. But, like, there's no, like, town town. Wow. It's because there's a, a bunch of different little towns that feed into one high school. Mm-hmm. So, like, transitioning to... Nashville, like, one of the biggest growing cities, like, mm-hmm. America now. Like, was that, like, a big transition? I, it wasn't that bad because Lipscomb's a smaller university. Yeah. So but it's it, in a bit, like, a bit, like, you see, like, like, in Wisconsin, like, would you just drive around and, like, not see, like, much people? Like, if you were yeah, driving yeah. on the street, like, there might not be any cars, like. Yeah, you, you could go, like, a five miles so without, like, without seeing another car. Is it not, like, weird at all? No, it, it, it definitely is, but I think going from a really small school back home, yeah. To a semi bigger university, like not that big. Mm-hmm. It was a an easy enough yeah, transition. Easy. That's like, good. Say I went to a, like an LSU, that'd be like a huge transition where like it's like literally nobody. So Everyone. The, yeah, the biggest one of the biggest universities in the USA. 
Wow. So, and then, like, food-wise, you, you're talking about, like, there's nothing around. Like, would you go to... So, like, there's, like, there's, like, off on all these little side roads, there's, like, guys who sell their chickens' eggs. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, there's, like, farmer's markets everywhere. Like, it's a lot of fresh produce because it's just, like, cornfields everywhere, yeah. bean fields. But, like, the the county fair... That was a, that that's was, a big thing from where wow. I'm from. When is that? When is that always just August. like once a year? Yeah, August. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, talking about baseball, like what got you in it? Like who or what got you into the sport? I mean, nothing. No one really specifically. Like it was just like my parents putting me in sports at a young age. Yeah. Just to get me doing so you something. You just tried like everything. Yeah. I, yeah. I, like every kid. Like what? What sports did you play? Like young, young, I played basketball. Soccer and baseball, yeah. I played. And then yeah, that's what I played. I hated soccer. Really? Despise so- even though my girlfriend plays it now. Like I despise soccer. I know nothing about it. Um, but like, yeah, I, I, I was decent at basketball, but I just I just fell in love with baseball. Yeah. Like I have videos of me running around my backyard with just a plastic bat in my hand, not even playing baseball. Mm. Like just having the bat in my hand. Fast forward. Now I'm not even hitting. But, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. still in the same sport. Yeah. And, like, going to um, growing up, because I know we were talking about it. I know you had, like, another sport that's kind of interesting that yeah, you, yeah. you play a lot. So, up north, uh, men's volleyball is very big. Yeah. And I was – I loved volleyball. Like, it was, like, me – that and baseball I was both extremely yeah. good at. And uh, I, if it wasn't, like, for getting recruited so young, I would probably – I probably would have played basketball – or uh, volleyball throughout high school. Yeah. But I got recruited so young that it kind of stopped that. Dang. But like, growing up, it was just, my dad was a Division One swimmer. Uh-huh. My mom didn't really play sports at a high level. Yeah. So my dad knew nothing about baseball. He loves baseball now. Like he can't get enough of it. Yeah. Because of just watching me th- yeah. and my friends throughout the years. But like, yeah, no one in my family played baseball. My entire dad's side was swimming, and my entire mom's side was soccer. <laughs> and you just don't like soccer at all. I hate, I hate <laughs> it playing soccer. It's too much cardio. Uh. And so uh, the recruiting process, you said yeah. it started a little early. I started getting recruited. Obviously, you can't do this now. Like, rules just yeah, yeah. rules just changed, yeah. like, this past year that mm-hmm. coaches can't talk to you till your junior year. But I, the first text message, so, like, baseball, like, because the coach can't call you until your junior year. Yeah. But you can call them. Mm-hmm. I got the first text message from my travel ball coach to call a Division One school before I stepped foot in my high school. I was coming out of eighth grade. Wow. I was in a tournament in northern Wisconsin, and it was post-game. I just got done pitching, and I got a text while we were at Culver's. You probably don't know what Culver's is. Yes. I do. I love – we have one in, actually, Birmingham. Do you really? Like, it just – it kind of, like, a, two years ago, maybe, it came in Birmingham. There's one in Nash. I think there's – like, it's like – Yeah, but it's way. it's a Wisconsin, like – Yeah, because uh, Grant yeah, on Grant, our team, yeah. he's from Wisconsin. He loves – Cheese curds yes. are fire. He loves um, course. So, yeah, we were post-game meal at Culver's eating my – I get the same thing every time. Double butter burger, bacon, fries, drink, and a mint Oreo concrete mixer. So is that your favorite, like, fast food? Yeah. Yeah. That or Big Chipotle guy now. Oh, yeah. Me too. So, I mean, we got I, like five I, minutes away. Yeah, so. I, I love Chipotle. Um, But, uh, yeah, we were sitting down. I was eating my ice cream, and I get a text from my travel ball coach. Hey, call – Blah, 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 at Indiana University. Yeah. To get going. So, and then talking about that, yeah. you brought up Indiana. I know you had, like, you were committed there, right? I, so, I, yeah. So, I, before I even stepped into foot in high school, I was talking to them. Yeah. I went on a visit there, and I ended up committing there November of my freshman year. And then, I don't know, it's just. Like, did it just didn't fall through? Yeah, so, like, I mean, being committed that young – Obviously, you know, being yeah. an athlete too, things are going to change throughout the coaching staff, yeah. and Every just everything's yeah. going to change. So I was committed there till August of my August of my senior year, mm-hmm. um, and so you so were yeah for a while. I was there for three years. I was committed there for three wow. years. So, um, and then the pitching coach moved on to a SEC school, uh-huh. and then my recruiting coordinator that recruited me had to step down for some personal reasons. Um, so you wouldn't really know, besides yeah. like the head coach, like you wouldn't really know yeah, and going into it. I get, I don't know if, how much I can really say, but yeah. me and the new pitching coach that came in just didn't really see eye to eye. Yeah. And I basically said, if I'm not going to go somewhere, I'm not wanted. 
So yeah, sure. I, I decommitted, and things started out really slow. And then my head coach uh, in the Indiana said, hey, like it's really late in the recruiting process, so I'll help out. And uh, he contacted some guys, um, and that's how I got hooked up down here with our – Wow. He's our pitching coach yeah. who actually just left. He signed with the Pirates. So, And then I know you had an injury yep. throughout. What year was that? Uh, I and what got, was it? Kind I of got explained. Tommy John surgery my uh, March of my senior year. I played in three games of my senior year. I didn't, wow. Yeah, I had a no-hitter going when I popped it. So what was that like? I know, like, injuries, you're like, oh, my, like, what's going to happen now? You know what I mean? So did you have any, like, Anyone or anyone telling you, like, keep going, like, or just, like, that made you want to keep striving, you know what I mean? Because everyone, because that's, like, a common injury yeah. Oh, it's like, baseball. So like, like, it's, like, the ACL for, like, soccer. It's, yeah. like, it's like the most common thing a pitcher's going to get. Yeah. Um. Honestly, it was just my parents. Like, yeah. And, like, I was already committed here at that point, and they respected everything. They were very, mm-hmm. like, honest, like, hey, you, like, we, we have an investment in you for four years. Yeah. Like, we're not going to take anything away from you just because you're going to be out for a year. Mm-hmm. So knowing that kind of helped push me a lot, too. And then my parents were very supportive, like, just take it slow, trust the process, and yeah. do what you need to do. For I'm sure. honest. Yeah. Coming back as fast as I, I did. Yeah, because you were, because when were you supposed to come back? You're I was, wasn't supposed, I got surgery uh, May 5th. Mm-hmm. No, May 4th. Yeah, yeah. May, May the 4th. Yeah, that's what I remember. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm. Not not even ten months post surgery, and I'm already playing in yeah, that's crazy. collegiate games. And so like it normally takes like kids like fourteen, fifteen months. So like this is like on average, it's like really early. This is really fast. Yeah. Wow. So did you just go to I, the? I I was so, lived in the training room and I, all that. I was so strict. I like what everything I did. Yeah. Like if my doctor said I couldn't do it, I was not doing You're it. You're not doing. Yeah. And I just I ate really well. I like. Maintained Did all the as, right things. I maintained everything that I could maintain. Yeah. Knowing that I wanted to come in here and compete right away. Wow. Yeah, that's that's some that's hard. Mm-hmm. Cause like I mean the worst I've had is like a I mean I had a sprained ankle. This is this is my first like serious injury. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So Cause, wow, yeah, because my the fir- the biggest injury I've I've not, I don't even think I've broken anything. Knock on wood, but um like the worst I had was a high ankle sprain coming into at Lipscomb. It was like I got in late April, early May, and we had to be up here June. But like I couldn't imagine like people knowing, oh, like yeah, he's hurt. Like yeah, just like what are they gonna like look at you at? Like you especially, know what I mean? it was hard because you can't like prove yourself yet. Right. And it was hard because freshmen have to come early for the summer. Yeah, we were here. I think. I don't even remember, honestly, like, I think the beginning of August. Yeah. And all the other guys are getting their training in, and I'm just sitting out sitting, there. Yeah. Like, just hanging out with the guys, but I couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. So that was hard. Like, trying to do things lefty and looking uncoordinated. And, <laughs> yeah. But, no, I trust the process. There's great trainers here. And yeah. The PT right down the road, that's helped me a lot. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, So, yeah. So then coming into college, um, what is something, like, you didn't expect, like, coming in here, like, either with anything, like, whenever you're hurt or just in general? I honestly thought that coming into collegiate sports, like, everyone's talking about, like, oh, these are going to be, like, the best years of your life. Like, the team is going to be so close. Yeah. Like, the camaraderie is going to be insane. I honestly kind of thought that was BS at first. Yeah. Because, like, all you just see it in movies, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I knew, and yeah. then. You actually, like, cause coming, especially coming from, like, high school, like, you got guys who don't really want to take it serious or just play yeah. for fun. And then you got guys like me and a couple other my teammates who are, uh, who are trying to make a living out of it. Yeah. And now you come in and now it's like, oh, everyone <laughs> everyone is like, this is their job. Yeah. This is like, this, they're trying to make a living out of this. Yeah. So, like, everyone's taking it serious. Everyone's there for each other. And that's kind yeah, of Yeah, because, big. like, it's hard to, because now, like, you're talking about in high school, like, not everyone they're just doing it, oh, like, yeah, the coach, like, for saw me for size. Or, like, yeah. for basketball, like, they saw me for size, so I might as well play or something. But they're yeah, just doing it for fun. But now it's, like, everyone is, like, working towards that same goal. Yeah. But I don't know how, like, other – I don't know how your team is, but my team in general, like, 
we're not all like compete. You know what I mean? Like we're competing for mm-hmm. like competing for all that goal, but like yeah. we're working together yeah. to like get to that together, which is kind of cool. Like in high school, I feel like some people always had those like other people like they didn't really like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't know if you had those teammates, but like a few like sandbaggers for like yeah. they don't really care. Yeah, they didn't just... really care, and it just like made you mad and all that. Yeah. But like everyone here, it's like they're all striving to like. Be, get better and yeah. go to that no, same goal. No, everyone's got the same goal. Everyone wants to go. Yeah. Go. For baseball, it's to, it's to Omaha. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, yeah, for us, it's so. March Madness. Mm-hmm. And um, how about, like, off the court? What are, I mean, off the field. field. Sorry, I, I always <laughs> ask this question for basketball players. But uh, um, off the field, like, what do you do, like, hobbies or interests? The biggest thing for me is me, like, my me and my dad are extremely close. Yeah. And I think part of, most of that's through baseball. Mm-hmm. But when baseball gets too much, it's like hunting and fishing. Like every year, we we take a weekend and just go. Even a week, yeah. we just go up to my grandparents who live north north Wisconsin. Like mm-hmm. if I if I live in nowhere, they're in Narnia. Like <laughs> there's nothing out there. <laughs> like, it's just them in the woods on a lake. Yeah, that's that must be nice sometimes. Oh, it's awesome just to get away. Yeah, and get spend away. time with them. For sure. And, yeah, and spend time in the woods. So. That's big for us. Mm-hmm. Um, we're a big outdoors family. Um, I kind of like, I dive like real deep into like country music. So like I don't, I'm yeah. not big on like the mainstream. Mm-hmm. I kind of like the the unknown kind of guys. Like the, like who? Like give an example. I don't know. If, let me see if I know who. Um, there's a guy dropping song this week on Friday. His name's Tucker Wetmore, and I'm super excited for that. I don't know. Yeah, he's yeah. He just blew up on TikTok. He's got like I've been following him since he's had like 15k followers, but now he's got almost a million. Wow. Yeah. Um. He's dropping his first song on Friday. Um. Cameron Marlowe. He's he's coming up now. Um, oh no. I just know Morgan Waller and Luke Combs. You would. <laughs> you would. <laughs> and all the, you know the the common Nashville ones, not the Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. No, not the the middle nowhere yeah, no. Ducks kind of guys. I know. Yeah. Um. All right, well, we're going to an off-topic question, how we normally do. And what's the most memorable gift memorable gift you have ever received? Yeah. Uh, when I was, I think it was my junior year of high school, uh-huh. maybe sophomore. No, sophomore, because I, I remember I was driving. Um, I've been begging for a TV like, yeah. just for my room, like yeah. begging for it, begging for it. And my parents always said, no, like, if you want it, you're going to have to buy it yourself. I'm like, I don't got that money. I'm like. 15, 16 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I finally got one for Christmas and I started crying. Wow. Uh, like, I've been asking for so long and wanting one for yeah. so long that I genuinely started tearing up yeah. and like crying. Yeah. My, cause yeah, whenever I was growing up, my parents never allowed me to have a TV in my no. room, like ever. And my younger sister had one the same time I did. And she's <laughs> two so and a half years so old. So you're like that. mad. You're like, yeah. wow. But um, yeah, cause I was. I was never able to have it, but, like, sometimes, so we would have a little playroom, like, yeah, we had know, yeah upstairs. They had and the TV, so, yeah, the TV, TV. and they're like, just go watch, go watch so it like, in there. But, like, sometimes I would, like, take it and, like, put it in my room for, like, a few days, yeah. but, like, and then I would bring it back. But I just feel like not having one, like, because now, to be honest, like, I don't really watch, or I feel like I just don't really have time to watch TV. No, it's, like. As like especially an athlete, it's wake up class, training, yeah. practice, and then it's like homework. What do you? Yeah. What do you like? Yeah. yeah. There's like not because I was I actually started watching the, um, there's a new Apple like documentary on the Patriots because I'm like mm-hmm. a huge Patriots fan. It's called The Dynasty. Yeah. And it's like I watched the first episode last night. Actually, it was actually really good. But um, yeah, growing up without. A TV in my room. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know I if it was, changed I, anything. I, I, was like, a str- now? I was a straight up YouTube kid like my entire <laughs> life, and I still yeah. am now. <laughs> who do, who do you watch? A bunch of outdoor guys like Flair. Has he's like just a big outdoors like hunting, fishing. Yeah. Um, baseball wise, it'd be like King of Juco and Trevor Bauer and them. So. I don't know any of them. I'm trying to think of my most memorable gift. Whenever I was really young. I had a birthday party, and I always wanted, I, yeah, this is it. I had a birthday party, and I always wanted, like, a jumpy house, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, not just, like, a jumpy house for my birthday a party. Bou- bouncy house. Bouncy house, yeah. But, like, I knew I couldn't, like, just keep one. Like, yeah. So, like, I was hoping my parents would, like, rent one out for, yeah. like, 
And like one time I walked outside and it was right there. And like that was like the most memorable. Like I remember that till this day. And I had, do uh, you know those things that you would like jump on? Like you would hold the thing and like the big balls, like the big like balls. balls. Yeah. And you would like, I don't know. And you like, but like, yeah, that was definitely the most. Yeah, like they were typically like orange or something. Yeah, 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 like those things, yeah, and like all that. But um, yeah, that was definitely my most memorable gift. And so going back into topic, I know in baseball there's like a lot of superstitions. Yeah, like you can't step over. Is that one like can't step over you can't, on the you can't on step the, on the foul line? Yeah, on yeah. the foul line. Yeah, like or for you, us, we like around the arena, we can't step on the L anywhere. Yeah. So oh really? Like you didn't know that on the arena? So like eat when y'all are walking on the arena? No, like around like by the fueling station and all that. Oh yeah, you're not supposed to step on the L, any of the L's. Apparently, wow! I, I learned that like two days ago. Oh, I I had no. Like, I, I watched. I, wa- I mean, Evan, I Evan yelled at me. He's like, "Dude, like, what do you like?" Wow, yeah. I, I didn't know that one. But, but they're, you, they're dirty people. Obviously, step yeah, on them. I know. But so, do you have any like personal? I mean, I do like the same stretching routine before mm-hmm. I throw. Um, the biggest one would be like, obviously, I, I pray before I pitch. Yeah. You know, I I take like five seconds, just like crouch down. I see, yeah, because I saw you yesterday. Yeah. Do that, yeah. Um, but the weirdest one is I always eat two uncrustables before I, before every game. So you did that last night, and yeah, wow, yeah. Is that? I don't know where it came. Like, yeah, like where, how did I think that? It, I think it just came from like, especially like high school, coming straight from school into playing right after. I needed something in between. So like, did you do you do it right before you pitch or the game? Before the game actually starts. So, like, do you do that every game? Yeah. All right. But, like, so now, even if you're not pitching, mm-hmm. you do it? Oh, so it's just like a – It's just a habit. Like, Wow. Yeah. And then in high school, did you – I don't know how the pitching works in high school. Did you – because I know in college, it's like if you pitch one game, you're, like, not going to pitch the next one. You know what I mean? Unless, yeah. I mean, you yeah, like throw you, very little. Yeah. Like, but, I threw six pitches. Say we had a game today, I technically could. Yeah. But uh, in high school, like, what was that? Well, we never really played back to back days. Oh, true. Like it would be like it was typically, th- it was t- uh, maybe we did. It was typically like a Monday, Thursday, and then occasionally Wednesdays. Yeah. So we never really pitched. But would you like pitch? How often? I would pitch every conf every. So we in Wisconsin, you play every conference team twice. Yeah. Back to back. Uh huh. I would always f- pitch the first conference team. Did you have like another pitcher, or did you have yeah. any other like? Yeah, I got a buddy that he's at one of our D three schools up in Wisconsin. Oh, nice up there. Yeah, because I never knew how that. Because I know, because uh, whenever I played in, uh, I played through sixth grade. Did you ever go to Cooperstown? No, I wish. Dude, I, I, I so that Coop, was for the Cooperstown, best. you need to be on a little league team. Yeah, and I transferred to a travel team. My twelve year year. To play like better competition, so yeah. I didn't have the opportunity to go to Cooper. Dude, that was the best. I bet that was like the, I've heard. Oh my gosh! Like I, I remember exactly what we did every day. Like it was just so memorable. Yeah. Like the best was. Did you ever hear about like the trading pins? Like you would trade. Yeah, yeah. No, like, I, like we did, did that. We did it at the state tournament. So I have a medal hanging in my room back home. Yeah, that has all th- thirteen different pins. That's yeah, my, I have like this it. huge towel. Yeah. And like it's like my little uh, a logo of my team on it, and then it just has all these and like the most prestigious pins to get were like the umps. Yeah. Like if you went to go get the one oh of the, I do- I totally thought it'd be like the out of country teams. No, but like it was the I mean obviously those, but like the coolest ones that everyone said like they would get like the cool and then you know the things that they like wipe off the plate with. Yeah. Like sometimes they would give you that as their pin if like they didn't have one. Yeah. But like that was oh my gosh, and then one time. Um, one of my teammates actually it was raining one night and like we had to play one time we had to play it was like raining we got a rain delay and we had to play a game at like 1 a.m mm-hmm. it was like absurd and then whenever it was raining like we were doing something and one of my teammates left the window open so like our uh it's like an entire big place with like bunk beds and that's where our, your whole team stays. Mm-hmm. And, like, it started flooding, and, like, the coaches got so mad, and it was hilarious. But, yeah, those were, like, the, that was so memorable. Like, yeah. that was the best ever. Well, um, kind of wrapping this up, like, what is someone that someone has said to you that has stuck with you? And then on the other note, like, what is something to, like, give the viewers out there listening? 
Um, I actually wrote this on my, like, we painted senior parking spots. Yeah. And it was, what you do doesn't define who you are. Who you are defines what you do. What you do doesn't define who you are. Who you are defines. Wow. Like, especially as athletes, like, yeah. we get looked at, it's like, oh, yeah. that's the ba- yeah, that's, the, ba- yeah, that's, that's the, the basketball player. That That's the baseball player. It's like, yeah. No, like, we're other people just, just outside of the sports. Yeah, wow. Wait, what you do defines who you are. Who? Wait, no, no. What what you do doesn't define who you doesn't are. Doesn't define who you who are. Who you are defines what you do. Yeah, because I yeah, that's I that's I really like that because, like you were saying, a lot of people. Oh yeah, he's an athlete. Like, some people like don't really want to have that title, you know. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm like, way more than that. Like, I'm not just like, this guy that's like thinks it like big time you know what I mean like yeah. I'm just a regular person like everyone else is and like yeah I I liked it a lot yeah wow you got any new ones you come across I actually let me pull up this I actually I, I have a full notes of quotes dude I have this let's see if I can where is this yeah it's right here I saved it the other night it was like it's wait oh yeah it's hard to wait around for something you know might never happen, but it's harder to give up when you know it's everything you want. Say that again? It's harder to wait around for something you know might never happen, but it's harder to give up when you know it's everything you want. So, yeah. like, yeah. Like, you can't just wait around for something. And then, but, like, if. Like kind of like an injury standpoint, like yeah, you're just giving up. Yeah, what we your have dreams a, were. We have a team Bible study that we go off on these. Like Kevin, yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah. He said, he said, uh, some people are so rich, all they have is money. Wow, some people are so rich, all they have is money. A real rich man is a man of God who walks with God, a faithful man. Yeah, that's that's bars, Kevin. Yeah. That's bars. Yeah. If you're listening, Kevin. Great word, but yeah. what? When do y'all do this? Well, is it just y'all? Typically, team? it's typically every Wednesday. Oh, uh, nice. And then once we get on the road, we'll probably do it every Saturday before games. Yeah, is it just who leads it? Like just one of your teammates? Uh, yeah. There's like a group of three of them. That are yeah, the main three. Nice. So. And then, what's it? Some advice that you would leave? You gotta have uh, some some good. I mean, throughout this injury, it's just like trust it. Like, yeah. God has a plan for you, like, whether it's throughout the sport or, you know, going creating your own business. Like, God yeah. has a plan for you, and just trust in him and let him li- let Him lead you. Yeah. Sometimes the plan that he has for you is, might be the hardest one personally, but it's the best one for you, like, yeah. just later on. And that's something I've seen a lot of quotes about that, too. Like, just because it took you down another path that you weren't supposed to you didn't think you were going to go, Yeah, maybe that is the right way. You know what I mean? Speaking of around quotes and, like, the, yeah. the Bible, what's your go-to Bible verse? Um, They're actually, oh, my gosh. It's, like, for narrow. I have it written down. Let's see. Matthew 17. Because I actually learned this uh, in one of my Bible studies. Oh, yeah, Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. So it's basically like everyone everyone tries to go this way. Like society, society's over here, and like God mm-hmm. is over here. And like the majority go through society because like yep. what, what we hear every day is not what – god has like in store for us and it's like turning that other way like have a complete 180 and um like god will meet you yeah and like only like he's saying only if you find it like not everyone like not a lot of people trust in his plan like fully and like a lot of people just go this big route oh like i'm just gonna walk with society whatever they do that's what i'm gonna do but like it takes like a change of heart to turn around and go the other way. Mm-hmm. How about yours? This is like on all my gloves, like everything. And it's like as an athlete, naturally we are going to have people who don't like us. Yeah. 
So mine is <coughs> Romans eight thirty one. If God is for us, who shall be against Jesus. us? Yeah, it's like my go to. That's on all my gloves and yeah. everything that I can customize. It's on there. Yeah. Wow. Well, it was a pleasure, Love and I, I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Yeah, me too. And um, this is another episode of Lamy's Last Word. Again, you can find us on Apple Podcast, YouTube, Spotify Podcast, and um. This is Adam Sotalski, freshman pitcher for Lipscomb Baseball. Appreciate it, brother. And hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Appreciate you. And then press the.